It took 13 engineers to build Sora AI to make videos like this, and this has changed the video making industry forever. Yes, you heard me right. 13 people only. My name is George, and I am a part-time machine learning student at Georgia Tech, as well as a full-time software engineer at Amazon. So in this video, I will explain exactly how Sora AI was made and how this can be done with just 13 people. Over the past week, I've seen a number of videos that talk about Sora AI, and it typically lies in two sides of the spectrum. The first being, we have some people who think there are still some issues with AI-generated videos, and that's clear. Hand movement seems to be an issue. Sometimes multiple objects come up from nowhere. Sometimes the fire in terms of the candle for this old lady uh, for her birthday, the candles is moving in the wrong direction. Then there is another group who is really scared by the increase in quality. And not just the increase in quality, the speed of it. I mean, check out this video of Will Smith eating a hot dog and look at it now. However, Despite all the discourse regarding the quality of the video and the current issues of the video, I think one thing that hasn't been discussed nearly as much is the amount of people it took to make something like this. It's probably because most people don't know what's actually needed to create an AI like this. So to understand this, let's simplify the process and explain the three things needed to create AI. Machine learning models, data, and computing power. First, machine learning models. This is quote unquote, the brain that powers the AI. For Sora AI, it uses a combination of text conditional diffusion models and transformer architecture. So that's the brain of the AI. But here's the point that I really want to get across. This technology was not invented recently. Diffusion models in the context of generative modeling were introduced in the early 2010s. There was a really important paper called Deep Unsupervised Learning Using Non-Equilibrium Thermodynamics in 2015. And this laid the groundwork already for diffusion models. Secondly, the transformer architecture was introduced in a paper called Attention is All You Need in 2017. And this paper presents a novel neural network architecture that relies solely on self-attention mechanisms rather than reoccurrent or convolutional layers to, to process sequential data. And this transformer model has become the foundation of most of the AI that you use today for language learning models, as well as ChatGPT. Now, this is for all of the products that you know so far but there's also other models that still exist that hasn't really hit the mainstream. Instead of giving you guys a rundown of each of the neural network models, I'm just going to list all of those papers here that you can take a look in your own time if you're interested. But my point is that we have already had these models for many years. So engineers today, they don't really need to reinvent the quote unquote brain of the AI. Let's move on to data. Intuitively speaking, data is already abundant in the internet. Why is social media free? Because we give it all of its data and it can collect it and sell it. I suspect the reason that Elon Musk bought Twitter is not just because he wanted a social media site, but because Twitter has massive amounts of data and you need this training data to build on your model. So the reality is, that we don't actually need additional people for the data collection because the data is already there. You can kind of guess where ChatGPT or OpenAI creating Sora got its data from, but I'll let you read between the tea leaves yourselves. So finally, this leads to computing power. So that's why NVIDIA, you guys have probably seen in uh, the recent weeks, has been increasing like a rocket ship, and that's because we need more GPUs to train this data. I mean, look, take a look at this dog example. This was at base compute power, which is already using a ton of GPUs. This is at four times the power, and this is at 32 times the power. As you can see, it's not just about the models, it's not just about the data, but it's also about how much you can spend on your supercomputers. I hope you guys are kind of getting it already, which is that none of these things require additional people. I mean, I took a look at the article list and it's pretty much one PhD lead chief researcher and 12 bachelor degrees people helping him out. So given these facts, what does this really mean for society? Well, I think Sam Altman said something interesting, which is we might witness uh, the first one person billion dollar company in the near future. I'm not sure that will happen, but it's kind of interesting to think about. And many companies are streamlining their operations. For instance, when Elon Musk bought Twitter, he decided to reduce the software engineering team by 85%. And I feel like this trend is likely to continue. But on a more optimistic note, 
perhaps layoffs or reducing the workforce won't be as prevalent, but instead the expectation for a particular person or for a particular team will be much higher. So let me give you a case example of how this can occur. Let's say you work at a large company and then a small team, their productivity increases all of a sudden by like 200% because they're using ChatGPT and they're using AI. Well, the executives will take a look at this and be like, okay, so why is this team able to be so much more productive? And what ends up happening is all of the other teams are forced to do the same thing or are placed uh, under the same standard. So basically, either less people are needed or the same amount of people are needed, but they have to do a lot more work. In the long term, I think what Max Tegmark says in Life 3.0 is very poignant. He says that it's getting progressively harder to argue that AI completely lacks goals, breadth, intuition, creativity, or language. And these are all traits that many feel are central to being human. This raises profound questions about what truly defines humanity, even in the near future.